the California Teachers Association, CTA, and the Institute for Teaching, IFT, present IFT Expo 2015, a series of presentations by IFT grant recipients. Hi, I'm Caitlin. <laughs> and I'm Gladys. And I'm Taylor. Okay. And we're from Marysville FFA, or Marysville, the town, and Marysville High School. And we are a small agricultural community, and we are part of FFA, or Future Farmers of America. And it focuses on teaching agriculture to high school students. And in our local chapter, we have about 250 members of a 900 student body. Uh, basically what we do is um, we, uh, FFA chapters are known for their, for their, uh, for doing different community services in their towns. What uh, Marysville FFA chapter is known for is their expertise in ag literacy. Can any of you tell me what ag literacy is? Or an idea of what ag literacy is? Anyone? <laughs> Um, well, for us, what ag, for us what ag literacy is is to teach our future generations about uh, where their food and fiber come from, and we develop lesson plans and curriculum to teach them at a state level, and so that they're ready to come out into the world knowing what what it is and where their food and fiber comes from. So we have numerous opportunities when teaching ag literacy. And they are, number one is we teach K through fifth graders in schools in our district. Number two is that we teach around 2,000 third graders. 2,000 third graders. We taught 2,000 third graders at, um, a farm bureau, at the Farm Bureau's sponsored farm day. Thank you. <laughs> And then number three is we have taught at local spring car fall harvest festivals, spring carnivals, and we've also taught at local community church events. Number four is we have taught around, we have taught multiple sixth through eighth graders at our national ag day at our high, on our high school campus in March. And number five is we have a nature, as my ag advisor Miguel is going to explain in while she's presenting, we have a Nature Bowl team going on right now thanks to our Ag Excessive Grant, and we, ha we are teaching a brand new fourth grade team this year. And number six, we have, been, we have taught with the new generation standards by using Common Core. And this past fall, we have taught 120 first graders by using genetic diversity. In conclusion, these are six of the teaching and coaching methods we do while using ag literacy. So you might be wondering why we do this. Well, we do this because we're from an ag community and it's amazing how many students don't know where their food and fiber comes from or how it's produced. And I'm sure you're wondering how we do it too. Um, <clears throat> well, what happens is uh, schools or any other organization contacts our advisor, Bonnie McGill, and uh, when, once she gets these calls, she, she will gra uh, she'll explain it to the class and then she'll put us all in, uh, she'll tell us to get in groups. And then as soon as we get that, we go into uh, looking into the disciplines of each grade levels, uh, what we're gonna teach, how we're gonna teach them, just to make sure that we have, we can cover all those disciplines that they need to, that need to be covered with Common Core. Um, <coughs> And then with that, we go and we talk to the teachers. We see what the setup is, whether we will be in group, uh, we will, whether we will be teaching in groups or whether uh, we'll be doing uh, just teaching the class as a whole and whether we will do it inside or outside. And I'll turn it over to our advisor, Bonnie McGill. Okay, as I get Gladys set up, she's gonna run my slides because I don't do that. Okay, so ag literacy is the name of our game, and that's what our expertise is. We're a traditional agriculture education program with FFA, but we kind of found a niche in the ag literacy, as my students were trying to tell you that. 
there's a need out there that K through eight kids really need to know where their food and fiber comes from. They're gonna be voting members of our society in the future and they need to make informative decision, decisions when they get to that. So with our ag literacy, Gladys is just gonna do the slides. We are, the kids design their own t-shirts. They're always constantly doing make and takes and activities with the students uh, in the class. The, my students have already told you, um, we are a 250 student member chapter that says 300, it fluctuates every year. There's about uh, 900 in our student body at our high school, very small community, only 12,000 residents. And what we do is we just wanna promote ag literacy and we're doing numerous ways. We started out just teaching at the local uh, elementary school and with this grant, we're now able to teach and do um, six different programs and we're actually starting a seventh, which we haven't mentioned yet, because it hasn't started yet, it's gonna go on um, within this month. And the cool thing about it, it's peer on peer teaching. I just sit back in the classroom and watch. When you go in the classroom, you'll even see the teacher that, whose classroom we're visiting, they're in the back of the classroom. They're grading papers, they're texting, like some of you are doing right now, and do, you know whatever they, they need to do, because my, my teachers run the show and get all the students involved and integrated into the, the work that they're doing through the curriculum that they've developed. And it's just really neat to watch my students you know, peer teaching these younger kids, whether they're kindergartners, all the way to eighth graders, which is a little bit more intimidating to them because they're a lot closer to them in grade level. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes tough. But everything we do here, you go, whoa, that looks really cool, Common Core. We've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> you know, but now it's called Common Core. But anyway, next. And so what does the grant provide us? Transportation, drove us down here today. I have to provide insurance for my little darlings here in case they fall out of bed last night, I don't know. But you know, it gives uh, us a lot of teaching materials and supplies. They can design t-shirts if they want. Uh, you're gonna see some pictures where they wear Santa hats. It's at Christmas time, we do a lot of teaching. And so whatever they want to help with their project, their presentation, the grant has helped us with that. Okay, our first thing we're gonna talk about real quick is Farm Day, and Gladys is gonna set it up to show a really quick video about, it's about a minute video of what actually goes on at our Farm Day. Th uh, 2,000 third graders at the end of this, they're like, I don't wanna have kids, McGill, because they go through them all in like six, four minutes. She takes the mic, yeah. Okay, so she'll get that started and we kind of do a primitive way of just holding the mic to the speaker. Got two, three eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna propagate our plants. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this, we're gonna make this geranium into something bigger, okay? And it's gonna have identical, identical DNA to it, mama, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, we're gonna, I want you to make a hole in your soil. And then I want you to uh, look for a node that's gonna sprout out roots. And I want you to stick it in the soil. If you have, if you have one that looks like this, put it in sideways. That's our signature mark, Grow Baby Grow. I can go across campus and, sorry, I, you know, hey, Miguel, how's it going? Grow Baby Grow, you know, and, and we say this all the time with, uh, with the students. It kind of gets them involved and interacted while we're talking here. Gladys is just kind of going to slowly go through some slides and things we do. Timber is a commodity. A lot of people don't know that. And we do a lot of plant propagations with both seeds and plant propagations so they know the differences and get some genetic diversity. You heard her say the word DNA. You said, she said the word node. We said soil. We don't call it dirt. Dirt's what's under your fingernails. 
You know, and so even though they're younger children, we're teaching them the correct terminology. This is Taylor here with her sheep. What's the difference between meat and wool breeds? And how the wool is different, how the facial features are different. We have a miniature horse. We don't have to say, oh, here, come touch the miniature horse. It's questions, who, what, when, where, why, how. Why are the eyes set farther apart on a horse than they are in our own human body? Talking about predator prey, you know, a horse being a flight fright type of uh, animal. And the, we chopped off little pieces of wool and gave each kid a chunk of wool to go and go, whoa, study the crimps and see how neat the wool was. Kids get their little picture taken next to a tractor. We get into nutrition now. We are talking about the difference in your different juices here. So the kids are learning about the nutrition and what they're drinking. Get them away from the sodas. Fun little things. They all got to touch the cow. My, the Mex this is my favorite one right here. I mean, look at that. How many hands can a cow get on it? You know, uh, constant. The kids also get shirts to go to this farm day, and PG&E sponsors that but it's all done by the students. Then we go inside, we go to the actual classrooms, and we go to elementary school classes and we teach. And these are gonna be photos of my students teaching, usually one on five, one on six, sometimes to the entire class. It depends on what the stage needs to be. We bring the reporter in. We need public notoriety, so I wanna be on the front page of our local newspaper for what we're doing. They make ice cream. Uh, they're, they're right there one on one with these kids and just neat pictures. Look at the face of that kid, you know, looking up at her. And again, I'm in the back of the room taking pictures, the teacher's grading papers. It's the kids running the show for 60 minutes doing everything. And it's usually rotational stations. They design their lessons with the curriculum. We give them sites to go to, activities to deal with. They put it all together themselves with their group. You see a lot of kids that would never speak up in class all of a sudden talking to these other kids. And it's just, it's just really neat. We cover all the disciplines. History, uh, social studies, language arts, math, and of course science, that's our big one. Our National Ag Day is an event we have on campus in March. And we bring about 250, 300 sixth through eighth graders to our school to learn about ag. And it's also a double dip for us for promotion for our program. That is a bull, not a cow. That is a bull on our campus, Pold Hereford. And we have a bag. Our grant bought us this $200 bag. It's called a Chico bag. And I have students in costumes. She's inside that thing. And they walk around promoting, don't use shopping bags. And what do we have with state law coming into effect? Don't use plastic shopping bags. So we're promoting that. Again, back to timber. That's a big commodity for us. Now this year, which was new because of the grant, we're actually, we have principals that call us up and say, hey, can you come in and teach the new generation science standards to our classes? We just, like Taylor said, we taught 120 first graders. The teachers are like, yeah, do it, please. It takes the burden off of us, because how many K-5 teachers teach science? So now my kids go in and teach the science. And this was a huge thing we did for an entire day on genetic diversity to 120 kids, inside and outside. Of course, the outside's more popular because it's hands-on, has the animals and the plants. But they're always doing integrated activities. These kids are moving and going. Then our living lab, we have a actual farm at school where kids can come to our farm and do things. I don't have any pictures on that. And then uh, a new one we're doing this year is coaching. Well, we started it last year with a grant. Nature Bowl is an environmental science competition. It's statewide for third through sixth graders. Last year we started with third grade teams. This year we're taking those third graders, putting them into the fourth grade team. We take them out environmental science issues. They have com comp competitive events. And then we're setting the stage. They're going to be going to sixth grade camp. How smart are they going to be when they get to sixth grade camp? And so we're doing a lot. And how much time do I have? 30 seconds. Real quick. Really, 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 really quick. Okay. Um, I'm going to dump this all out, and you're going to tell me what byproducts are these from? Mascara, glue, paintbrush, band-aid, cram, football helmet. Where are these from? Nope. Petroleum, no, not horses, all from the same byproduct. I mean, same item. OK, it's a living animal. Four legs. Four legs. Close to ox, cattle. These are all cattle byproducts. We think of meat and hide, milk. No, believe it or not, byproducts, all of these. You got your vegetarian friends. Do they eat marshmallows? Eating a cow. So you know, you're putting on your, you're putting your mascara on. Whatever. Sorry if I offended any vegetarians or vegans in here. I am an ag education teacher. I can't educate you. 
But anyway, so crayons, all of these things are from cattle. We, the kids are like, whoa, football helmet, cool. What are we going to do today, play football? No, we're going to play cow. But anyway, you know, so, you know, it's just a lot of neat things that we can do with these students to get them interacted. And if you go to my, our little booth at lunch, we've got more interaction that you can do there. And I've got a lot of stuff that um, you can take home, too. So questions? Questions of my students. They're the star of the show. I'm just yakking. Um, and what's really neat about the two, uh, three of them, only one out of the three have an interest in going on into agriculture, but they are, are better informed new members of society for their food and fiber. Do you have any questions of them? OK. <laughs> As you eat your salad today, as you cut into your chicken or whatever they're giving us, think of where it came from, who grew it. Learn more about the Institute for Teaching and its commitment to strength-based teacher-driven change at www.teacherdrivenchange.org and follow us on Twitter at CTAIFT.